All right, so this will be the fifth part and hopefully the final part of the videos that I'll make regarding our hints for our final exam using prior Ziegler kinematic hardening. And so what I've done is I copied my original spreadsheet for my first load step that had all the plasticity calculations in it. And I started at the stress state that caused yielding again. Right here, and I started with my alpha vector that I had at the end of the segment that was elastic loading. Calculated my xi. Here's my yield function. My d sigmas, all that stays the same as my first plastic loading segment. There's my partial derivatives, magnitudes, unit vector, the check for loading, the d mu, the d alphas, the d lambda, the d uh, epsilon, plastic. Uh, one thing I think I still need to do is I need to update my strain state. Okay, so let me just grab that. What I need to do is I need to start with the um, ending strain state. So these are the tensor strains. I'm going to grab this line. I'm going to put that in there. And now the next strain state is the elastic and plastic instrument plus the increments plus the previous strain state. Okay, so that really ought to do it. Now let's see if we can see, uh, make sure this is working right. Here's my yield function. That should stay right around 150 as I scroll down here. Because we're moving the yield surface as well as moving the stress state. But the stress state has to stay on the yield surface. So this should stay pretty constant. Looks like there's a little round off in there, which is to be expected with an incremental approach. You can minimize that by taking smaller increments, and there are some correction procedures you can do, but again, the basic idea is to show you uh, how this all works out. That does stay constant. So I'll pause the video here. I'm going to copy in my stress strain results, then I'll make some plots, and then we can see what this path looks like. Now, hopefully, it it uh, has enough plasticity that it looks interesting enough, but we'll see. All right, so I'm making some plots, and it looks like I've got some kind of issue here, and I'll point it out in a moment. It's always a good idea to, to check your calculations by making various plots. So I have a plot of sigma x on a vertical axis, epsilon x. That doesn't look too bad. This was our initial elastic loading segment, then that other part, the unloading, and now we have continued loading. But my shear stress strain response looks a little funny. It looks okay, but it, something weird is happening here. My tau versus sigma x, okay, this is my input loading, so that looks good. This is my sigma x, uh, that actually should say uh, epsilon, uh, yeah, uh, epsilon xy versus epsilon x plot. And again, this looks kind of funny here. And now I'm plotting both of my strain plots. And the orange one here is the shear strain. And I see a discontinuity here. Um, that discontinuity to me indicates that something, uh, my starting strain state didn't copy, get copied over properly, or there, there's some kind of weird thing after this segment. So that'll be a matter of tracking that down and making that adjustment. Let me see if I can do that uh, for us here and fix this. Again, um, just want to kind of show how, if you have problems, how you can diagnose them. All right, so what happened was that I forgot to copy the previous strain state to be my initial strain state in the next spreadsheet. And then I had to do that a couple times because it, it changed the one that I did remember. 
but I think I've got it all straightened out now. So this is what my response looks like. Again, the orange is the shear, the blue is the axial strain. And this uh, plot's kind of interesting. Let's see if we can make sense of it. This is a shearing strain on, uh, tensorial shearing strain on the vertical axis and axial shearing strain on the horizontal axis. So initially they both look like they kind of go up uh, about the same. Okay, now this is the segment where we are holding the the uh, axial stress constant. We're changing the shear. Okay, so the shear strain decreases, and then that's elastic. And then here's a segment where we have an elastic change in um, axial strain and stress. And then here we have some plasticity. So it makes kind of a weird looking uh, response that corresponds to what's going on in our stress uh, phase space diagram that we have here. All right, so hopefully this has been of use. Um, you know, you have the equations. Uh, personally, I think this is probably easier if this was programmed in as a uh, computer program. Excel isn't bad, uh, but, um, you know, there's pluses and minuses to it. Um, but uh, it's a way to get some calculations and kind of uh, segment this out. All right, do contact me if you have any questions.